Good morning. It's Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this special session of the Carmel Clay School Board. May I have roll, please? Um, board President Mike Kirshner, uh, board member Pam Knowles are not here today, and all our board members are present. Thank you. Will you please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? Today, the school board is going to meet pursuant to Indiana Code 2029-6-19A to discuss the terms of the tentative agreement of the Teacher Collective Bargaining Agreement. I'd now like to turn the, it over to Mr. McMichael. Thank you. Um, the parties did meet um, after September the 16th, um, which is, uh, we're required to not meet before that in a formal basis. but. Uh, so we did meet and the parties did come to a tentative agreement. Very pleased to present that to you. Um, and our uh, Carmel Teachers Association have um, conducted their vote with their members and, and uh, they have um, uh, ratified the proposed tentative agreement. And so uh, purpose of this meeting is for the board to, um, uh, to, d to discuss the tentative agreement. There'll be no action taken today and uh, then we'll ha the board will have an, another meeting on October the 7th, 7th at 7.30 a.m. Uh, to consider a recommendation to, uh, to approve the contract. And so with that, I'll, I will uh, go through um, and share with you the uh, summary of the tentative agreement. So this is a, a proposed two-year agreement in 2019-20. Um, in, uh, um, it provides for a 4% increase to the salary schedule plus increment. Um, it increases the life insurance for teachers from $50,000 to $75,000. And then there are a couple of items under health insurance. Uh, first, effective January 1st, 2020, new enrollees will not be permitted in, the, in our uh, prime plan. Uh, we have four. Uh, different health plans that employees can choose and, and uh, this plan is the lowest deductible plan, um, the, otherwise the richest plan that we have. And um, also effective July 1st, 2019, uh, the spouse of a teacher covered under the early retirement incentive program would not be eligible to remain on the health insurance plan if he or she becomes eligible for Medicare. Uh, in, the, in the current agreement, um, or the past agreement, the our employee, uh, the teacher, was re would uh, no longer be eligible when they reached Medicare eligibility, but we did not. Um, that was not clear with regard to the spouse. So we, if if the employee had an older has an older spouse, that spouse has been permitted to stay on even after Medicare eligibility. So that's the change there. Uh, we will not. Um, this does not remove anybody, however, that's already on, on the plan. So it, it's really going forward. Uh, then um, the next item is we've provided for foster placement leaves. This is a new leave, and it would provide that a teacher may use up to five days annually for foster placement issues, and that these days are deducted from the teacher's uh, sick leave balance. So that's a summary of the first year, and in the second year, um, uh, there are no other changes in language, but it does provide for a 2% increase to the salary schedule plus increment. And I would like to share with you that the source of funding for this um, proposed contract would be first primarily from the 2019-20 and 2020-21 state formula. Um, and also, um, as you know, we have a reduction in the employer's contribution to teachers' retirement fund from 7.5% to 5.5 percent, so that basically um, freed up um, that two two percent difference uh, bec is became available for other uses. And then the the third item would be our referendum fund increase, which is increasing at 3.5 percent for 2020, and it's estimated about 3.4 percent for 2021. So that's a summary of the agreement. Um, and I also like to share with you that. Um, this was a very good uh, session. Uh, the parties uh, worked very well together. 
um, and I'm extremely pleased that that the um, uh, the membership in the, in the uh, Carmel Teachers Association is over 70 percent and the vast majority of those um, members uh, did provide a uh, vote in favor of this proposal and I think that's really significant because under Indiana law um, the members of the association uh, are the only teachers that can vote on an agreement so in communities that have very low participation um, they're really not the majority in some many cases the majority of teachers have no vote because they if they choose not to join the membership so uh, I think we're very fortunate to have uh, this is an agreement that has literally been um, approved by the vast majority of our teachers and I think that's significant thank you thank you any questions Ms. Vandenberg um, first I'd like to say thank you to the Teachers Association their leadership as well as the leadership from our administration who have helped to negotiate this contract for our employees um, in the past we've not had such a wonderful collaborative working relationship and it as a board I think we are we are very pleased that um, we have moved beyond any differences and typically I know we have in the past used um, interest-based bargaining so what type of um, how, how did we negotiate this particular contract well, I would say that um, we're, we're continuing to do that. It's in, in uh, I would say, much more of an informal basis. But um, when you define an interest-based bar based bargaining, and you know, the, at the crux of that is is each par party is really um, sincerely trying to listen and understand and 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 gain insight to what is the interest of 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 the other party, and so. I believe we we do that on a consistent basis um, although we we don't typically use the term interstate bargaining but but uh, if you were to observe you would you would you would see that uh, the parties are are very interested in in uh, each other's um, points of view and perspectives and and uh, and I know that that contributes to our uh, collaborative relationship Thank you. A um, couple other questions for the health insurance. So the the lowest deductible plan will then be eliminated for not for the existing employees, but right. moving forward, we'll go from four plans to three plans. Or tell me a little bit more about that, please. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The the language here that's new language in the agreement um, does not eliminate any of the plans, including this the prime plan. We have existing language that's been there for. Well, be probably 10, or 10 years or so um, that states that if, if any of the plans drop below 20 percent participation um, then they would be they then they would be eliminated uh, the, the following year and so uh, currently um, our plans are pretty balanced um, uh, in terms of percentages but the this action will uh, because there will be no new enrollees in the prime plan um, the parties are anticipating that, that the plan will drop below 20 percent at some point in the future um, simply because two things one is as is, is, um, there, there will be no new enrollees going into that plan and so as people you know retire and leave and so forth uh, it will um, the percentage will drop and also as we um, um, with our initiative with our um, wellness program and so forth we have an increasing number of employees uh, particularly new employees that are uh, electing the high deductible plan and so they take the high deductible and then with utilization of our wellness center at no cost to the employee that that's um, attractive to you know any number of uh, our employees existing employees as well as uh, new employees and one last question I'm sure I'll have more but on this initial how does the the negotiated contract impact our cash balance moving you know as if we estimate where this will put us how what does that look like we will um, maintain a, um, a I'd say a level cash balance um, it should we anticipate it would increase slightly and in, in really in the same uh, proportion as our increased budget and uh, so the this agreement does not in any way put us in deficit financing. Thank you, Roger. 
Thank you. Um, like Leila, I'm very glad that the district and the teacher association here work out the best plan for our teachers for the next two years. Uh, I just have a question here about the teacher's sick leave. So here is that the foster placement leaves will allow teachers to take up to five days. <coughs> so what's the total number of uh, sick leave? Teachers receive uh, eight days. New teachers receive 10 days the first year, and, and after that, teachers receive eight sick days per year. Those day, and they also receive four uh, personal business leave. If they do not use all the four personal business leave, then they convert to sick leave going into the following year. Those sick leave days are uh, cumulative, um, and there's no cap on them. And um, so, uh, over a period of years, the um, the employee can, can accumulate significant number of sick days, which is uh, provides for them if, in the event of significant illness. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Um, yes. The short term, as we talk about the sick leave, mm -hmm. short term and long term disability, could you touch on both of those benefits, please? Yes, we have both short term disability and long term disability for uh, our teachers. And so the short term disability provides for 60% um, of, um, of the employee's salary. Uh, they can also um, receive 100% by if, when they're off uh, ill if they choose to also use um, their own sick leave. So they can would use like two days of sick leave and it would, would provide them for five days of pay along with the benefit of the short-term disability. And um, that becomes a fact. There, there's a seven-day um, uh, elimination period. So the first seven days they would... They, they would use their own sick days and then, then, then they would go to having the benefit of short-term disability. The long-term disability has an elimination period of 90 days and um, um, so, so basically what would happen is, is if they would first go on short-term disability and if they continue to be ill, um, that, that would then have potential to go into long-term disability. Thank you. Can you confirm, um, historically, this is quite a significant increase than we've been able to do for a while, is that correct? Yes. yes. And then, um, can you just touch base briefly on the referendum? I know that when we did that two years ago, we really um, told our community that that was going to be used for teachers. Could you kind of clarify a little bit more about how that, how we are using that? Yes, well, the referendum is, is um, over 15 percent of our uh, total operational funding. So um, that, of course, is first. So that's very significant in the first place. Uh, Carmel Schools would not look the way it does in terms of our staffing and our, our um, salary schedules if it were not for the local referendum. So we're very appreciative of having it in the first place. And um, uh, that referendum then is, in this contract, it's it's a significant portion of the funding, and as I stated earlier, uh, it does increase, um, or typically it's going to increase each year, and so that provides it since it's used almost entirely for salaries. Um, it, um, it it will we expect that it will kind of keep up with inflation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any further questions? Anything, from Dr. Beresford? Well, I've always got something to say, uh, but uh, I do want to um, echo your sentiments and thank uh, Peter Harris here, president of CTA, and uh, I got to tell you, it's a wonderful working relationship uh, with the uh, the CTA. I also want to thank uh, Roger and Steve Stefanoff over here, who was on the, uh, the administrative side, and um, you know, it's a, it's a balancing act when you're working on a, a school budget, and uh, and to be able to give as much money as possible to our teachers, especially in a competitive environment we're in, uh, it's really significant. And uh, I think I said it was the it could be the biggest raise in ten years. Do we do we hit the ten year mark? Was was that a good guess? 
I think it's a good guess. It may be even longer than that. All right, so we're real happy to be able to give the teachers, you know, the best raise they've gotten in 10 years. And uh, and also, uh, but in my little world, is uh, they keep us competitive uh, so that we can draw the best teachers around and uh, and, and compensate them appropriately. So uh, I'm really thankful for you guys, all of you, and uh, good work you've done. And, uh, and I'm glad that we can... Uh, you know, be in this position uh, with our teachers and uh, really all of our staff. I think it was fair all across the board. And uh, and then uh, a little help from the governor, you know, with uh, reducing some, some costs to us so that we were able to, to add a little more. And then I'll stay within our ca our cash balance. And uh, that that's a delicate balance you have to do. And uh, Roger and his team's done a real nice job at that, along with Pete and their team. And, and uh, it's all been transparency. You know, we, we all are real open with each other. And I think that's what's... Uh, going to be positive and powerful moving forward. So good job, everybody. Thank you. Ms. Spannenberg. I do have just one more question. Um, it's more logistics. So now that we have um, a negotiated contract, which we are all very excited about, what are the next steps pursuant to Indiana Code? Because it's not the same as it has been in the past. Okay, so um, once the board approves the agreement on the 7th, uh, then we will move immediately to um, provide for retroactive pay for our teachers because it goes back to uh, first first day of school. Um, under current law, we cannot start bargaining formally until September the 16th, which means we're guaranteed to, uh, in the first year of an agreement, it's guaranteed that, that the uh, salary increases will not be provided timely. And so uh, we regret that, but we're, that's not within our control. Uh, we do anticipate, however, um, uh, providing we will have this on the, um, is it the 24th pay, I believe, or, um, so it will be within, within um, about two and a half weeks after the board approves the agreement uh, that, that teachers will get their increase. Okay. And then... There, on the, the meeting on the 7th, does that permit the public or teachers or anybody to comment? Or where does that fall in? I know that's another, that's a new addition to Indiana Code as well. Yes, I might just uh, speak briefly to the, the changes. Um, this year, uh, we were, the, there's, there were a requirement for uh, three different meetings, public meetings. Um, first, um, the um, uh, the uh, CTA and the, and the school administration uh, held a held a meeting. Um, uh, that meeting, uh, as required, was advertised 72 hours prior. Um, and the purpose of the meeting was to um, to provide opportunity to the public to make any comments that they would like regarding uh, the collective bargaining process and 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 or the um, uh, contract that we have. Um, currently and uh, so that was the first meeting uh, this is the second meeting which was again was advertised 72 hours prior to this meeting uh, or minimum of that and uh, the purpose of this meeting as you know is to uh, now to discuss the, the uh, tentative agreement and then the third meeting um, uh, which we've had in the past is the meeting that that the board actually takes action on the proposed contract and, and uh, that will meeting, as I said, will be will be uh, October the seventh. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll do another thank you that uh, we did try to, and with cooperation of everybody here uh, in the board as well, we tried to, to go as quickly as possible in order to be able to get our teachers their back pay as quickly as possible. So uh, uh, we tried to work within the law to keep it as, as short a period as time so it wouldn't drag out. Is there anything further? All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.